me to 2 Corinthians. Hallelujah. Praise God. 2 Corinthians is the, the fourth chapter. Hallelujah. I had to get, go get my old Bible back. <laughs> I just got so used to that one just talked to me. It it opened itself up all the time. 2 Corinthians, the fourth chapter, verse 13. Hallelujah. Amen. The Bible says, We having the same spirit of faith. We have in the same spirit of faith. According as it is written, I believed, and therefore I have spoken. We also believe in therefore speak. You see what I'm saying? So in other words, the spirit of faith has, the spirit of faith encourages us to believe and to speak. Believe and speak. Say what you believe. Therefore, believe and say what you believe, right? So that's the way faith talks. That's the way we talk. Faith people talk that way. They believe and then they speak it. Hallelujah. And see, we're always correcting ourselves, working on our languages, working on, our, uh, on what we say, negating words, hallelujah, causing words to continue to negate themselves. But other than that, we thank God for that. Hallelujah. Amen. Now, the Good News Bible says this. The Scripture saith, I spoke because I believed. See, when you believe, you're going to speak. In the same spirit of faith, we also speak because we believe. So, in the same spirit of faith, we also speak because we believe, right? In other words, I'm going to say what faith says. Because I know faith is going to say what God says, right? Now, I'm not going to say what fear says. <laughs> because fear is going to say what fear wants to say. And fear is just a bunch of, bunch of baloney, really. Well, I don't want to use the word baloney because I enjoy baloney. But I want to use fear is just awful, right? It's just awful, right? But we see something so beautiful. Let's look at uh, Genesis, the first chapter. Hallelujah. Now, the reason why this is so important to us is because this is the way God operates. You know, God is our Father. And uh, our Father has given us His... Uh, his way of living, his way of doing things, his demeanor, uh, he's given us. We have his genes, his DNA, hallelujah, amen. And so the way he talks, we should talk. The way he sees things, we should see things, right? And, and stay within the confines of love because he's a mighty lover, hallelujah, amen. For God so loved the world, that's you and me, that he gave us Jesus. Oh, God, laid his son down, right? In Genesis, are you there, the first chapter and. I had to get my Bible because my Bible is just so, it preaches too much to me. In the beginning, God created the heavens and earth. That's verse 1. In the beginning, God created the heavens and the earth. Now, let's believe that with a full trust in what the Bible says. Not what science says or not what that person says. You know, the other day I was watching some some um, history channel and how the earth was formed and I wanted to watch it to see what's, what's the new words out there. They still believe in the bang theory. Now, I want to tell you something. The bang theory, I'm going to call it this way. There had to be an explosive, explosion, explosion of the power of God that hit our, our, the earth, right? The power, because the Holy Ghost has power. But it wasn't just a bang that created that. It was God that caused the bang of the Holy Ghost to come. And let's look at it. It says here, In the beginning, God created the heavens and the earth, and the earth was without form. And it was void and dark. That's not God's creation right there. According to Scripture, Something caused the earth to become darkened again and void without form. And that's where we have that gap theory. I totally believe in the gap theory. Something happened. And the Bible says, and the Spirit of God, and the earth was without form and void, and darkness was upon the face of the deep. 
And the Spirit of God moved upon the face of the water. So this is the Holy Spirit. He's brooding. He's moving. He's hovering above the face of the waters. And God said, God spoke. This is where all of a sudden the voice of God is heard. Because the Bible says, and God said, let there be light, and there was light, and God saw the light, that it was good, and God divided the light from the darkness. And then if you keep reading, verse 6, God said, verse, verse uh, 9, God said, verse 11, God said, uh, verse 14, God said. And so you're, what, what, what you're seeing here is, is faith in action. Because faith, the spirit of faith, speaks what it believes. God spoke what he believed to be. So if God spoke what he believed to be, then that has been given to us to say things what we believe, right? Say the word of God. Hallelujah. Amen. So the Holy Spirit was here, which we know it's the spirit of faith that was operating in God. And it's available, if I can say it this way, it was just hovering, waiting on God to say something. Because we're going to find out the Holy Spirit won't do anything unless he hears the Father. And so he was just waiting, Holy Spirit just waiting, just waiting, just waiting. And then God said, and bam, Holy Spirit took off to work, right? Go with me to John, the 15th chapter. We're going to go somewhere here. And I just want to stir, stir us up to continue to stay in what you believe the Word says. Continue saying what the word says for your life. Pastor Christine, when, when that German shepherd jumped on her and she slammed her body against the brick wall, she came back in such pain, but she was saying the word of the Lord. I am healed. I am healed. Not one bone or muscle or ligaments busted. And I am healed. And she went through a lot of pain, but she stood on the word. What was she saying? She said the word, she believed the word, and she said it till she got confirmation today. It was so awesome. Now, I think uh, Teresa saw the MRI report, right? We saw the, I saw the MRI report. You can't understand. No? It just, it's just so deep in all kinds of things. But it did say rip this and this and this and this. And so when we went to the doctor today, we knew, we knew something good was going to happen. We were going to confirmation. And uh, no sooner when the doctor came, he says, you know, it didn't rip. It didn't rip. Good thing. And, he, and he, he did some tests on her. She did some tests on her. And so, you know, this way, this way, this way. He, and she said, nah, you, have, you have no damage to the limb. It's, it's, just, it's just partially ripped, which uh, it, it'll, it'll just mend itself back with some therapy. And so we knew it. We knew it. Hallelujah. Amen. So we walked out of there knowing, God, this was all about you, God, because the word worked at the beginning. See, so going back to this, God said something. Holy Spirit moved on it. Amen. Right. So the spirit of faith speaks what it believes. Pastor Christine believes she's healed. She spoke it for three months. This happened in December. She got her test. She got her. She, she got, went to the doctor in April. She, you know, she couldn't stand the pain, but she kept standing and believing God. I remember her up here saying, I'm going to lift my hand by faith. And she was raising her hand by faith. You remember seeing that? She was raising her hand by faith, and I can tell she was just stretching, you know. That's her faith, right? But notice what it says in John, the 15th chapter, verses 26. Hallelujah. Are you excited to be in the house of God? Notice what it says here. We, but when the Comforter is come, this is the Holy Ghost, the Holy Spirit, Jesus is saying, but when the Comforter is come, whom I will send unto you from the Father, even the Spirit of truth which proceedeth from the Father, he shall testify of me. Jesus is saying this. Now notice what it says in verse 7 now. Nevertheless, I tell you the truth, it is expedient for me to go away. For I go not away, the Comforter will not come unto you. But if I depart, I will send him. Say with me, I will send him. And he is to come. He will come. Verses, look at verses, uh, chapter 16. Go to, I, well, I went into 16 without telling you. 
Look what it says in 1613 now. Howbeit when he, the comfort of the Holy Spirit, uh, the spirit of truth has come, he will guide you into all truth. It is the truth. For he shall not speak of himself, but whatever he shall hear, that shall he speak, and he will show you things to come. Now notice this. This is the work of the Holy Spirit. Holy Spirit is going to say things, but only what he hears God say. Now here we're finding that Jesus said, uh, it's expedient for me to go away because if I don't go away, the comfort which the Holy Ghost will not come. So we know that. Well, let's just go, go quickly to Acts, the, the, the 18th chapter. Go to Acts. This is where the Holy Spirit comes. But I want to show you something the Holy Spirit was showing me as I was studying this. So, so notice this. Holy Spirit came because Jesus sent him. Remember, he was in the beginning with God, the Holy Spirit. Right? He was in heaven with God. He, he, was, he was there part of creation with God, including Jesus. God spoke. He did. Jesus came. Uh, Jesus had to go. So he called the Holy Spirit in. So we have the Holy Spirit on earth now. Thank God for the Holy Spirit. He's here with us right now. Hallelujah. Amen. In, in Acts, the first chapter. Hallelujah. Acts, the first chapter, verses 8. The Bible says, but you shall receive power. This is what I'm talking about. Power of the Holy Ghost. When it comes upon you, you shall be witnesses of me, both in Jerusalem, Judea, Samaria, and unto other most parts of the earth. So in other words, it's going to take this power of God to come on us. In other words, we're going to say what we believe. Testimony says, testimony, your testimony is going to say what happened to you because you believed it. I received Jesus Christ. I needed him. Therefore, he came into my life. My life changed. That's testimony. I'm speaking. The spirit of faith is speaking. Holy Ghost is there to bring you power. It's going to take the Holy Ghost to give you that power to be able to say things, right? Go to chapter 2 now. Hallelujah. The Bible says this, and when the day of Pentecost was fully come, uh, this is after Jesus left. They were all one in one place. They were in church, having church service. And suddenly there came a sound. Say with me, sound. That, that's what the world calls the Big Bang. <laughs> but I want to say it's the sound of the Holy Ghost. A sound from heaven as a rushing mighty wind, and it filled the house where they were all sitting. And, and there appeared unto them cloven tongues like as a fire, and it sat upon each of them. In other words, this is the power given to every individual. And you have that power today. Thank God for that. It's not lifted off you. And they were filled with the Holy Ghost and began to speak with tongues as the Spirit gave them utterance. In other words, they're saying what the Holy Spirit has given to them from God. In other words, there is an utterance coming out from these people coming directly from God. So Holy Ghost is speaking, uh, is come to the people and God now is speaking via Holy Ghost. Wow, that's powerful, right? Hallelujah. Just like, just like when the power hits you, it comes on you. Hallelujah. Amen. Now notice what it says here. He says this, and they were all filled. Now drop down to verse 6. Now when this was noised abroad, what? Everybody's speaking. Uh, the utterance. When this was noised abroad, the multitude came together and were confounded. Just astonished, awakened. And, and were confounded because that every man heard them speaking in his own language. Now, I want you to see this very closely. I want you to see this. Every man heard them speak in his own language. Notice this. He's not talking about the people down there. He's talking about the people that were in the church now are speaking a language, and they're speaking it, and all of a sudden they're understanding it. Notice this. It's like me speaking of the power of the Holy Ghost through me and the Holy Ghost using me, now the Holy Ghost is opening your ears to hear what I'm saying in my language, even though you speak Chinese or whatever it may be. They're hearing, my, in this case, uh, they, were, they were hearing Hebrew. And so all of a sudden, they're hearing something. Now notice what it says here. And the Bible says this, and they were amazed and marveled, saying one to another, Be, behold, are not all these which speak Galileans, and how here we, we, every man in our own tongue wherein we were born. In other words, I'm, in other words, he's, the Hebrews are saying, we were born Hebrew. We speak Hebrew. They weren't. But yet they hear us 
and they understand as though it was us speaking to them. It's the Spirit of God moving on them, right? Can you say amen? Now notice this. They, they were, how be it, and how hear we every man in our own tongue wherein we were born. They were uh, Parthians, Medans, Elamites, I'm probably not pronouncing it right, and the dwellers in Mesopotamia, in Judea, in Cappadocia, in Pontus, in Asia, Persia, Papphrelia, Egypt, and parts of Libya about Crane, and strangers of Rome, Jews, proselytes, Cretes, Ar Arbians. We do hear them speak in our tongue. In, in other words, all of a sudden, all of these are speaking Hebrew. And they're saying, we're hearing them speaking in our tongue. How do they know Hebrew? And how do they that speak other languages can speak in Hebrew? Isn't that amazing? Why? The language of heaven coming. The Spirit of God moving them. So they're hearing under the power of the Holy Spirit. Now notice this. Verse 11, I want you to see something now. This, is, this impacted me. We see the Cretes and Iberians, and we do hear them speak in our tongues now, underline this. This is what the Holy Spirit showed me. The wonderful works of God. This is what transforms people. When you give a testimony of your life and what God did through you, Holy Ghost now is using you. And now they're seeing and they're understanding in any language that, that there are, they're going to hear a purity of the gospel of Jesus, but not only that, they're going to see and hear the wonderful works of God. See, this is what's going to change people's lives. First of all, you know, I remember taking a class years ago. Uh, it's called Evangelism's Explosion, and it's a powerful class. It's, it's a very powerful class. And in this class, <laughs> uh, I, I was sent by my pastor to this class, and there was about 15 other pastors there, but I didn't study the handbook, when, when, in fact, somehow it got lost in the mail and I didn't get it till the day before class. And everybody was already studied. They, had a, they already had the book. So I'm going in this class and I'm saying, oh my goodness, I didn't study. I didn't have the book. I just, I, you know, and so the, we, they, everybody picked partners and I had another pastor with me. And, and, and I told the pastor, you know, I, I, this is going to be ridiculous, but I didn't study. So, ooh. <laughs> <laughs> wow. So it was pretty rough, right? But, but the thing about it was this. Uh, they gave us a notebook and they told us to write your testimony. And so I'm getting after my testimony. I know how to write my testimony. And all of a sudden, everybody's turning them in. And, and, and I noticed my, the, the pastor that I was sitting next had a, mine was like maybe two pages long in legal notebooks and his was just halfway so, well, he's got a short testimony. <laughs> Amen. Well, when the teacher got up there and he says, okay, now, you just wrote your testimony. Now, I want you to rewrite it into two paragraphs. Well, that's what that guy did. He wrote it in two paragraphs. And I had to do it all over. I said, how do you do this in two paragraphs? I didn't study, so I didn't know how to do it. So, finally, I realized how to do your testimony in two paragraphs. And he said, this is the key. The key is... If you will find the important parts of your testimony that really made some change in you and brought up by the Holy Ghost, that's what you're going to share to people. Now, the, the attention span of an individual, if you're going to talk to them, it's not very long, but when you get someone, when you're talking to somebody under the power of the Holy Ghost and you're showing them just a small part of your testimony, they're going to be just, what are they doing? The wonderful works of God. Right. And so the thing about that was it was fun because the, the whole week we were there, uh, it was fun uh, to be able to share our testimony with, with each other and, and how we narrowed it down and how they just dissected mine. They helped me dissect mine. And, and it was so fun. Now we had to go practice it on somebody. And so we all drove to to a, uh, an apartment complex and and they split us up and and they say, you're going to go that way, you're going to go that way, you can go this way, you're going to go that way. It's just, it's just to be led by the Lord. And just remember, your focus is how to be able to share your testimony to a complete stranger. And the thing about that was I was nervous. 
and I'm asking the Holy, Holy Ghost, help me, you know. Preaching from the pulpit is different than talking to this complete stranger about your testimony, but it, it, it changes after a while. And I remember meeting this guy on the stairwells and got to talk to him, and, and I did pretty good because he was pretty interested. Did, didn't receive Christ, but he was interested. He said, that's, oh, oh, that's great, thank you, thank you. But I realized something. It takes practice to be in front of people to share what God's done in two paragraphs. But the key is this, allowing the Holy Ghost to take those two paragraphs to illuminate the person that's hearing you so they can see the wonderful works of God through you. That's the power of the Holy Ghost. Now notice this, this what the Holy Ghost does. Remember, uh, God will draw men unto Jesus by the power of the Holy Ghost. And if the Holy Ghost is never activated in our life or never released, then how will he draw people to hear? You see what I'm saying? So hearing under the power of the Holy Ghost or the power of the Holy Spirit brings people to see the wonders, works of God. Tell me the wonderful works of God. So in other words, I'm going to say what I believe because this is the spirit of faith that's working in me. I believe the word of God. This is the way God spoke when he said, let there be light. And the Holy Ghost immediately moved upon that word. Now, Jesus came, gave us the Holy Spirit. Now, notice it's quite amazing. Gave us the Holy Spirit and showed us that we're going to have power in different arenas of the city, different arenas of the state, different arenas of the, of the country, different arenas. I, I, I wonder... A lot of times how people have such a hunger for other distant lands to preach the gospel. I was hearing of a couple uh, from Pittsburgh that was on the radio. They were testifying that they heard the Lord. They're going to Guatemala. They're young. They're young pastors, young. She's a school teacher and he's a youth pastor. And they have three children. They're, they sold their house. They sold two cars. And uh, they're moving to Guatemala and they, they want to go minister the Word of God and help the pastors there and help them teach them the Word of God. And they were so excited. So I was thinking, isn't it amazing for a person to move to a foreign country? And in fact, he doesn't know Spanish, but she was a teacher in Spanish for elementary. So she probably limited in her Spanish, I don't know. But she says, we're led by the Holy Ghost. And I started thinking, this is the work of the Holy Ghost. This is what the Holy Ghost does. So... He gave, Jesus gave this couple that's go to Guatemala. He said, you shall receive power, uh, verse 8, chapter 1. You shall receive power after the Holy Ghost has come upon you, and you shall be witnesses of me. Notice this, witness of me in different parts of the city, different parts of the state, different parts of the world, and even the uttermost parts of the earth. And notice this, that's the power of the Holy Ghost. I think we need to really recognize what the Holy Ghost does. Now notice this. Now, I want you to see something. Uh, they thought they were drunk. <laughs> you know, they thought they were drunk, right? But notice there's something so amazing. Listen to what it says here. Peter now. Peter said this. Um, he said, verse 16, he said this. But this is that which was spoken by the prophet Joel. Let's hear what happened. It shall come to pass in the last days, said God, I'll pour out my spirit upon all flesh. This is where you have to have confidence that all flesh is going to receive the spirit of God as you, as you and I witness to them. And I'll pour out my spirit upon all flesh and your sons and your daughters shall prophesy. This is the word of God. And your young men shall see visions and your old men shall dream dreams. I tell you, it's just amazing. It keeps moving on, right? So in other words, verse, verse, uh, uh, listen to this. Uh, you, verses 22, it says, uh, You men of Israel, hear these words. Jesus of Nazareth, a man approved of God among you by the miracles and signs which God did by him in the midst of you, as yourselves also know. What's he doing? Holy Ghost now is using him now. Holy Ghost is using him to minister. Uh, verse 29, men and brethren, let me freely speak unto you of the patriarch David. 
that he is both dead and buried and, and the sepulcher is with us unto this day. Therefore, being a prophet and knowing that God hath sworn an oath to him and to the first fruit of his loins according to the flesh, that he would raise Christ to sit in his throne. What's he doing? He's being led by the Holy Ghost. Hallelujah. Amen. So if you look on, uh, therefore... Verse 36, therefore, let us all the house of Israel know surely that God hath made that same Jesus of whom you have crucified, both Lord and Christ. Now, when they heard this, what? The glorious message and the wonderful message of God. Holy Ghost is working. Verse 37, when they heard this, they were pricked in their hearts. And said unto Peter, to the rest of the apostle men and brethren, what shall we do? And then Peter says, he leads them to the Lord. Repent, be baptized, be filled with the Holy Ghost. And so what happened? And verse 14 says, Then they that gladly received his word were baptized, and the same day were added to them about 3,000 souls. And they continue. What do they continue? Into the things of church, into the things of the gospel, into the things of the apostle. So see how the Holy Ghost was already present. Holy Ghost is working. So if we can believe what the Bible says, we need to speak it. If we believe we have the Holy Ghost here on earth and the Holy Ghost by the prophet Joel prophesied in the last days, the Spirit of God is going to fill people. In other words, hearts of people are going to hear what the wonderful works of God is going to be done or, or has been done through us when we speak. Hallelujah. Amen. Amen. So hearing under the power of the Holy Ghost, I want you to think about this. Hearing under the power of the Holy Ghost, they're going to hear the wonderful works of God through you, but the Holy Ghost is not working in them. And all of a sudden they're going to say, I'm ready. You're going to lead into Jesus. And you're going to say, you know what, I, I want to tell you something. Let's get you baptized. All right, well, let's set up a time to get baptized. All right, let's do it. I want you to come to church so the pastor can meet you. And let's get baptized. What's going to happen? God is going to fill his house with, when you and I get into this position. Can you say amen? So it'll be amen. Hallelujah. Amen. Pastor Osteen said something years ago, and I'll never forget it. He said, you form your world with your words. Anybody ever hear him say that? Or Pastor Christine always says it, or I always say that. But he actually said that. Pastor Christine uh, said this, if you're not saying, you'll not see it. She said this, uh, she always says this, if you don't say it, you'll never see it. Right? Uh, I started saying, it's a beautiful place. For years I said that it's a beautiful place. What was I saying? I believed, therefore I spoke. What are we seeing? We're seeing the wonderful works of God. If I never would have spoke it, if I would have never believed what the Lord says in this word, I would have never spoke it, and we would not have it. I think we need to start speaking what God is saying. We got a full house. Say with me, I got a full house. Got a full house. I, Pastor Christine says we need 60. How many people we need here? 62 chairs, 62 people in this house. 62 people to fill up these chairs. 60 poo, two. In other words, that means you're going to lose your chair, guys. You're going to have to sit over here. Amen. <laughs> Amen. So we're going to start saying what we believe. We're going to start saying we got a full house. We're, we have the fastest growing Holy Ghost church in, in, in the city. Hallelujah. Amen. But also, we're going to start now working on sharing what God has done for us. And then we're going to get to that later on about about working our testimony, just to, to be able to, when you talk to somebody that's a complete stranger and you're able to give them just a few, few short sentences about you and what the Lord says, and then you're allowing the Holy Ghost. See, the Holy Ghost works quick when you're allowing him to work in you. You don't have to drag for hours. I went to Wal a Wal uh, Whataburger last Wednesday and there was uh, two guys that, drive, that ride bikes. What do you call those guys? Uh, I, 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 Mormons, I think. Mormons. Or, I don't know. Anyway, Mormons or whatever, they were riding bikes with ties, and they cornered a guy. And so I sat kind of close to them. They cornered a guy, and you could tell he was eating his, eating his sandwich, and all of a sudden he was polite, and they sat down. And I'm listening to them. Boy, I tell you, they're unloading on him. Joseph Smith's Bible prophecy, they're unloading him that the Joseph, Joseph um, the prophet Joseph heard from the Lord, and he wrote this Bible, and that's what we're living by. And, and, and I'm thinking... <laughs> oh my goodness, I'm thinking, oh gosh, I'm praying. Now I'm praying. Pastor Christine and I are praying. And the finally I said, let's go, honey. We're going to go because he's going to jump on us now. <laughs> I mean, they were just ready. They were, they were fired up, right? And I started going back to thinking about 
uh, that time that I was in that class. And, and it was so exciting because you don't waste time. Now notice this, you don't waste long time. You know perfectly well the Holy Ghost is already working because you've already prayed for that person. You pray for divine appointments and you're looking for a, an opportunity to do what God's called you to do that day. You're not going to let the sun go down until you've done something that day. And so you're, you're already looking for an opportunity. You're sensing an opportunity. You're, and you're going to break through, through fear. and You're going to overcome nervousness. And, and you're already going to be loaded and cocked, ready to, to share to someone what God has done for you, right? But, but see, the point is this. When you do your part, Holy Ghost already is doing his part. Remember, the Holy Ghost moved, maneuvered this person to go across your path. Maneuvered him to sit down there. Maneuvered him to get gas here. Maneuvered him to, at the grocery store. You see what I'm saying? I mean, Holy Ghost already doing something. Now you're just stepping out into faith and speaking the spirit of faith because the spirit of faith speaks what it believes. Amen. Come on. We believe Jesus died for us and we're, we're going to raise from the dead. So now we're speaking what we believe. We're saying what we're doing, like, like Pastor Osteen, we're forming our world with our words. Today, I'm setting up the atmosphere for me to witness to somebody today, at least to plant a seed, at least to pray for someone, to do something that I'm going to step out and have an agenda. My agenda is for that person to know Jesus Christ, right? So in other words, we're going to be saying it. Can you say amen? We're going to be saying it. Hallelujah. Amen. Now notice this. Go with me to uh, Psalms 103 now. Now notice this. The Holy Ghost is with you. You have the spirit of faith on you. You have God in heaven giving the Holy Spirit plans and you stepping out by the Holy Ghost. You're full, you're full of the Holy Ghost. You prayed in tongues and you've already prepared for the person. You know, uh, uh, some people get to the point where they see the person they're going to minister to. So they say, that's him, that's him. I'm going to minister to him today. But, but see, we don't have to see it. We just have to believe what God told us to do. Remember, the, the book of Acts, they were all filled with the Holy Ghost and they heard them speak in their language. Hallelujah. Amen. Psalms 103. Praise God. Notice what it says here. Psalms 103. Hallelujah. Verses, um, verses 29. Well, there's not 29. Psalms 103. Okay, this is it. Verses 19. Verses 19. That's what it was. I put it. A two before the nine. Let me put a one. Okay. It says here, The Lord hath prepared in his, his throne in the heavens, and his kingdom ruleth over all. Say so, amen. amen. Bless the Lord, ye his angels, that excel in strength. Powerful people. That do his commandments. Hearken unto the voice of his word. It didn't say to do God's only spoken word, but it says, hearken unto the voice of his word. That's the spirit of faith. We believe, we speak what we believe. Now notice this, verse 21, Bless ye the Lord, all ye his hosts, angels, ye ministers of his that do his pleasure. Say we pleasure. Amen. Bless the Lord, all his works, in all places of his dominion. Bless the Lord, all my soul. These are angels now that are also waiting to assist us. Uh, they're, they're waiting. And they're going to move by the spoken word of God. You know, you know uh, when, when every morning when, when I, I get up, I get my coffee and my Cheerio, whatever, Breakfast, and I speak the word, I get my devotion, I declare, I make a declaration, I, I release my angels. Um, and I always say, Father, set divine appointments before me. I want divine appointments before me. And I realize that anywhere I go, any what I, anything that I do, any person I talk to, I know that's a divine appointment. Every time, every time, every time. It, you know, Sundays when we leave from here to church, we pray, Lord... Direct us to a place that we can enjoy a wonderful meal. But Lord, we want the right person so that we can minister to, that we can receive, uh, you know, help and assistance in taking care of us, but also we can bless that person. And it's amazing every time, every time, every time. Now notice this. Angels are always available hearkening unto the command of the Word of God. 
So you have the Holy Ghost already doing um, an assignment for you, preparing people to cross your path because now the Holy Spirit now knows you're, you're activated, you're ready to do something. So he's going to set you. You know, Holy Ghost knows that you are sensitive to know that this day, this is going to happen. And then now the angels, when you hearken them, angels now position people. You know, an angel could drop something right in front of you and that person can pick it up right in front of you. It's amazing. It's amazing. Uh, angels can drop a spoon from your table and that person can come pick it up. And that very moment, you can minister to that person. It's amazing what God can do. I've always seen that. Or an angel can do anything. I was at a Brahms one day, and a storm was pretty bad, pretty bad. So I didn't want to go to my, my vehicle. It was pretty bad. The trees were blowing and all that. And all of a sudden, the doors opened up, right? The suction of the wind opened up. It was not a tornado, but it looked like a tornado. And all of a sudden, everybody goes, woo, woo. <laughs> they go, woo, woo. And so I said, come on in, Holy Ghost. Come on in, come on in, come on in, come on in, come on in. I tell you what, that was a wonderful experience. Now think about it. Notice this, the experience of knowing that the Holy Ghost is present to do these things, right? Go with me to Isaiah 55. Are y'all with me, church? Hallelujah. Isaiah 55 now. So notice this, every day you have an opportunity to create something. Every day you have an opportunity to speak the word of the Lord and, and create and bring someone to Jesus every day, every day of your life. Isaiah 55 verse 11 says, So shall my word be that go forth out of my mouth. Say with me, my mouth. It shall not return unto me void, but it shall accomplish that which I please, and it shall prosper in the things whereto I sent it. Now notice this. Notice this. Here we find God speaking, saying to an unbeliever things that you don't know about me, but then to a believer we know things about God. We know that when we speak the word of God, we're sending God's word through my mouth or your mouth, and it's accomplishing what it's going to do, and it's not going to return void. Now, God gets in that and says, now notice this, he gets right into it, and he says, it shall accomplish that which I please, and it shall prosper in the things where I sent it. In other words, this is, this is what you say by the power of the Holy Ghost. You see what I'm saying? So in other words, spoken words have assignments. If you will understand that, uh, I declare and decree today I have a divine appointment in Jesus' name. Father, a, deportment, a, a divine appointment in Jesus' name. Lord, someone that needs to hear uh, the message of the salvation of grace. Someone, Lord. Someone that I can just plant a seed. Someone that I can, I can just sow. Someone that I can just bless. Someone I can pray for. Someone today, Lord. I'm expecting someone. I decree and declare. You're getting angels working. You get the Holy Ghost working. And you're gunned. You're, you, you're triggered up. Ready. Ready to do what God's called you to do. Amen. See, you're not going to say this is a boring day. It's a boring job. I'm just so bored. You're not going to say that. You're, you're at work excited, expecting something to happen. And then when something does happen, you're going to say, Lord, is this it? Is this it? Is this it? Is this it, Lord? Oh, Lord, is this it? Is this it? Is this it? Yeah, it is. It is. It is. Oh, gosh. And all of a sudden, you just, you just let go. Now, notice this. You don't preach a sermon, right? Because you're expecting God to work in you through what he's going to say. But you got to say something. So the best thing to say is, is something pre-planned, already prepared in your heart that you're going to say so the Holy Ghost could take over. The more that you do that, the more you realize Holy Ghost is always using you. And you don't, you don't, really, you don't really think about it. You're just let go. Right? Hallelujah. Amen. Go with me to Genesis, the third chapter. And I'm going to go ahead and close it. Genesis, the third chapter. Hallelujah. See, everyone needs to hear the gospel. Everyone. Now, notice this. Uh, let me, let's just go to Genesis, the third chapter. I sent out a text to everybody. And um, I said, uh, well, let, me, let, me read, uh, let me read the scripture here. Genesis, the third chapter, verse 15. Are you there? Verse 15 says this. And now, um, Genesis 3.15. Notice what it says here. 
God's saying in verses 15, chapter 3, I will put enmity between thee and the woman. So Satan is getting his work orders right here. And between thy seed and her seed, and it shall bruise thy head, and thou shalt bruise his heel. Now notice this. What's he saying here? First of all, let's look at it through the eyes of God. God is saying, Satan, you're going to be an enmity, enmity between you and this woman. What's he talking about? He's talking about Jesus. He's talking about Mary, right? Now notice this. Uh, if you look at here, God is already speaking the spoken redemption of what's coming to pass. Now I want you to listen to what I'm going to say. Satan already knows that. He was there at the garden when God spoke to him. He knows that God dropped him to the ground as a snake. God knows, I mean, he knows that he's been kicked out. He knows that he's doomed, right? Notice this, so when you go in the power of the Holy Ghost, Satan is restricted at that very moment because now he said Jesus. Now notice this, he said this. And unto the woman, he said, I will greatly, no, verse 15, I will put enmity between thee and the woman and between thy seed and her seed, and it shall bruise thy head, and thou shalt bruise his heel. This is Jesus right here. So in other words, he knows that when you go to do something and you're allowing the word of God to use you, he's going to hold back anything he can. If he has to hold back the sound of a train to get your voice across, he'll do it. So in other words, what's he saying here? He spoke the plan of redemption. He spoke the plan of authority. He spoke the plan of, 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 of the Redeemer coming. Come on, Jesus Christ. Uh, he spoke about the plan of, of dominion, right? So in other words, when you and I go and release the power of the Holy Ghost, man, we've got God on our side. We've got the Holy Spirit on our side. We've got angels on our side. We've got the Word of God on our side. And now you now are re realizing you've got Satan held back from this situation. You see what I'm saying? It's amazing when you allow that to happen. Hallelujah, amen. Let's go ahead and stand up. And let's close for right now because I think we had sufficient for right now. But we're going to continue this. But I want you to think about that. You know, um, let's, let's, let's plan on allowing God to, to use us. Now notice this. I sent out a text uh, this week. It was Monday, excuse me, one day, Monday. He said a recent, I said a recent survey taken, how do people start attending church? 2% of advertising. You remember reading that, right? Organized visitation, 6%. Invited by a pastor, 6%. A friend invited me, 86%. That, that's, that's amazing. Why? Because, see, that's scriptural. That's biblical. That's an order. That is the plan of God. And so I said, become creative when inviting someone. Have an agenda, purpose, that they become born again. Invite them to lunch or after a service. Visit them. Share Christ. Carpool with them to church. Make plans for an activity after service or uh, plan something. Have a fast food fellowship. Listen, a fast food fellowship is something so easy to do. Share your testimony. Uh, you know, take you some business cards. Uh, I want you to start taking some business cards like we have. We have thousands of business cards. Take you five per week and let that be your faith that you're going to pass out five per week. Not, you're not going to say anything until the Holy Ghost, until you start hearing the Holy Ghost, but start passing out. Say, you know, I'd like to invite you to my church and, and here's, the, here's the invitation. I just, just want to do that. You'd be surprised what an open door that'll have. Uh, you'll be surprised what door that will open or simply what it will bring. You know, we can do this church, hallelujah, amen. We can do this and we're going to believe God for this. The spirit of faith is in us. The spirit of faith speaks in us. We call things into existence so we believe we believe right father today we thank you that we believe what we hear i believe therefore i speak what i believe and therefore father we release the spirit of faith like god said let there be light father we receive that lord let this church be full to capacity father let this church be full to capacity father use every one of us to be able to witness, 
to someone out there, Lord, starting with the plans, the simplicity of something, even passing out the business cards. Father, use us, Lord Jesus, throughout our day. Father, we ask the Holy Ghost to give us divine appointments starting tomorrow. Divine appointments as we go throughout the day, whatever we do. Divine appointments, agendas, uh, 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 plans, Father. God, uh, in, 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 in something so easy, Father, that, Lord, that you'll quicken us and say, oh, that's easy, I can do that right now. In Jesus' name. Father, let it be, let it be, let it be. In the name of Jesus. Let it be, let it be, let it be. In the name of Jesus. We give you praise. I heard, a, uh, I heard a, uh, one of the disc jocks, uh, uh, she was talking how she got a, a spam call and she got tired of these spam calls and she felt bad hanging out with people, but they're pretty aggressive. Uh, I don't answer spam calls, but every now and then I'll answer a phone call that I, that I think it's important I'll answer and it turns out to be someone trying to sell you something. Anyway, she said, she said that I started asking the Lord when that happens, quicken to me how I can say something to them. And so she said, okay, she says, yes, I'm such and such, and, and I'd hear you out, but would you promise me that you'll hear me what I'm going to say after, okay? So would you allow me to say, it's not going to take long, but, but you could tell me then that person says, sure. And it's amazing that person will go, and she says, well, well, no, thank you. Thank you. I have this already. I did this. Now it's my turn. <laughs> and she will say, do you know Jesus loves you? Do you know that he loves you? And I, I believe this phone call was not by accident. I believe it was a divine appointment. I want to pray for you right now. Would you allow me to pray? And she said that she started praying. Also, she heard sniffles on the other end. And that person with sniffles, she says, I heard sniffles. And she says, I just want to tell you this was important. And I hear you. Are you okay? And this person just opened up. She said, I said things to her in my prayer that the Holy Ghost said it dealt with the heart of that person. And you know what? She says, go find you a church. Go to this church. Go there, find Christians, and they'll talk to you like I talk to you. They'll pray with you. I tell you what, that's a powerful testimony. Amen. Now notice this, what do we do? We hang out, we get bad. <laughs> Cuss them out, you know. Go, go sell them to the desert somewhere, I don't know, you know. And sometimes I'll see a spam, like today in service, I got, I got pretty close to two spams calls in service. I don't answer spam. But every now and then I'll answer something, but I realize, you know, when I answer it, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to be f effective. If they're calling me to get something out of me, then I'm going to call them, I'm going to talk to them and get something them, out of them. Give them Jesus. <laughs> Amen. And so let's find ways to, to please God in anything, anything. You know, uh, the, the guys are working out in the yards and doing, they're sweating out there. Have you ever thought about just... Going out there and say, hey, man, I'm going to bring you some cold water. I saw you cutting grass out here. And I'm going to bring you some water. Bottle of water, bottle of water, everybody bottle of water. What a perfect opportunity to talk to somebody about Jesus for the love of God, about water. They'll listen to you because they're going to drink water. They're going to say, wow, that, you're so nice. Do something out there. Hallelujah. Amen. You know, elder lady pumping gas and, and it's hot out there, which you shouldn't pump gas in the heat. But she's out there. What if you were to say, ma'am, uh, do you mind if I pump gas while you just uh, refresh yourself? I mean, since you got it on, let me just, I mean, I could put it for you. What a perfect opportunity just to show the love of God, but open the door for, for a communication, a, a dialogue, a, a giving them a card, a love card. In other words, let's start opening our eyes. Jesus said, open our eyes for the harvest is whitened. Let's start looking through the eyes of God and let's start seeing what he starts to do in our walk as we go about our day. Let's just start seeing. Father, we thank you, Father, Lord Jesus, that we will, um, Father, do, Lord, this which you called us to do, Lord Jesus, because we know that we have assistance through the word. We have assistance now. And you, you desire that not one should perish, Father. So that means you're going to touch anyone along my path so that I can be sensitive to do the work of God. And Father, I thank you, Lord. And we speak what we believe. We speak salvation's coming. People are getting saved. People are getting healed. People are getting dedication. People are coming back to the church, to the house of God. People are rededicating their lives in Jesus' name. And everybody said, Amen, amen and Amen.